What's going on guys? Today we're talking about the fastest way to grow your social media, grow your brand, grow your presence online, grow those leads, those sales, that web traffic, whatever you're trying to do, how to get mass attention using social media to you, to your products, your services, your company, your brand, whatever it is. Whatever it is you're trying to get out there, here's the fastest way to do it. So today, of course, we're talking social media, as we always are, except today I'm more prepared than ever. I actually have notes. There's actually things I wanna go through, uh, some mass value I wanna drop here, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. But I wanna start with something, because a lot of people, there's still this overarching argument of like, but is it really that important? Do I really need social media? Is, is it an accessory? Is it a nice to have? Or is it a must have? And that is, huge right now like the debate is crazy because there are actually people who still think they don't need social media for their business they're not hitting their sales targets okay they're not getting the leads they want in they're not getting the revenue they want they're not getting the exposure they want their competitors are destroying them i don't care if you're a mom pa shop or walmart whatever your scale this is true for somebody there's a lot of people, a lot of organizations, a lot of companies are going through this problem of, you know, we're not making money, but at the same time, we don't want to leverage the most powerful tool, the most powerful communication platform in the world, which is social media. So how powerful is it? 2.5 billion people, billion people are on social media right now. 2.5 billion active accounts on social media. That's unreal. Here, you want another one? You want another one? How many hours a day? How many hours a day do you think people are spending on social media? Have to make sure we get notes so we're accurate here. The average person is now spending two hours, over two hours a day. It's like 150 minutes a day. Every day, right? That's almost a quarter of an entire workday just on social media. So you got approaching half the planet using a platform of which the average time spent is over two hours. And you're still wondering if it's a good idea to get started. It's crazy because you know what? Businesses today that are coming up that are successful are depending on it. They're depending on social media. They're leveraging it unbelievably well. They're using it to get mass attention, to sell more product, to sell their services, you know, to gain exposure on their brand. And it's in the old days that like you really depended on a lot of you know, accessory marketing tactics. You have to kind of leverage all sorts of things and you have no idea what was working and you have to kind of send out flyers and mailers and get a, a listing in the local Yellow Pages ad and get on radio and TV. And all these things are still great. And if you can find great ways to do those, that's totally fine. But the easiest way to do it today, the easiest way, the cheapest way, the biggest way to do it, if you're gonna do one, is social media. You know, your business, you owe it to whatever it is you're selling or your business or your brand to bring mass attention to it. The revenue and the success of your company depends on your ability to get on social media and do this stuff. So that's why today we're going to be talking about it. We're going to be talking about exactly that. We're going to be talking about uh, how to use social media and grow it fast so you can get attention. Uh, which channels should you be on? Are you on all of them? Are you on some of them? How are you putting out content? How do you think of your content? All that fun stuff. But you know what? A lot of companies will still come back on this. A lot of people come back when I'm talking about social media. You know, I hear all kinds of rebuttals against social media, especially for bigger companies and executive teams, uh, because no one wants to be the one to make a mistake. No one wants to take a leap of faith into something new that could work if it risks losing their job. They don't want to take a risk on something that's unknown. The problem is everyone's waiting for something to be tried, you know, proven, tested, measurable all the time. By the time you get that, you miss the boat. You way miss the boat. By the time you wait for that to happen, by the time you wait for every single person you know to be using it and have proof that they're getting solid ROI week on week, day on day, month on month, by the time you wait for that to happen, the boat's gone right by. And so it's the people who are gonna take action now on social media who are gonna start taking action, start building all these platforms, right? Start following the rules I'm gonna lay out right now that are gonna get massive attention on their brands and businesses, okay? So let's get into it. But I mean, the crazy thing, I, there's, there's a quote that I was just reading about and I wanna keep it kind of top of mind. But it's something like, it was something like, I don't wanna read it off in detail right now, but it was something like, something percentage of CEOs, I think it was like 40% of CEOs uh, of large Fortune 500 companies or large Fortune 1000, whatever that is, I don't remember. But some percentage of CEOs of big companies were saying that they don't trust or use social media because they haven't seen uh, a quantitative return. They haven't seen a, a measurable, repeatable ROI. They have a hard time understanding uh, where exactly they make their money back. 
uh, right away in the first quarter. And so they just don't use it. And that's kind of really worrying. I mean, if these big companies are not using it because they're afraid they can't see ROI, uh, that means they don't get it all together. I mean, some of the biggest brands in the world, doesn't matter what area they're in. Like, I mean, if you look at Grant Cardone and how big he's blown up his brand, all on social media, on YouTube, on Facebook, on all that stuff, massive attention and it's sales training. He's in sales training, B2B working with Fortune 100s. That I know to be a fact. And he's getting those clients through YouTube, through Facebook. You know, he's not worrying about where's my ROI week to week. He's worried about how can I get massive attention? How can I get everybody talking and be always top of mind, always on the top of my customers, you know, thought pattern, I'm there, they can't escape. They open YouTube, I'm there. They open Facebook, I'm there. They open, you know, a website, I'm following them in ads. I'm everywhere, I'm omnipresent. That's what he's going for. He's not worried about like, hey, this one video we made, what's the ROI? He's not doing that because it's not the point. Right? And it's fine, I get it if you're a smaller company and you're kind of living month to month and that's kind of, you depend on survival. That's fine, there's, there's short term tactics you can implement, but don't get so caught up in what is every single tactic we're doing bringing back an ROI because you'll miss out on the biggest advantages on building a brand, a timeless brand that's omnipresent. That's what you want. The ROI of that is your business succeeds and doesn't fail. That's the ROI, okay? So let's get into it. I mean, the bottom line there is just a lot of companies are caught up in measurement analysis. Uh, and the fact is it's not for that. The, the fact is it, it's a function to get your brand out there. It's, it's a function to get awareness. It's, it's a function to bring attention, massive attention, right? What's the ROI of being, I don't know, Kim Kardashian, right? What's the ROI of years of getting attention to your name like Kim Kardashian? It doesn't matter negative or positive. She got massive attention. What was the ROI of everything she did along that path? She didn't track it like that. She didn't go, oh, let me release this, uh, you know, fun little tape here and see what my ROI is, okay? They didn't say, let me uh, get our own TV show and see what the ROI is right away, first week. They ran it, they ran it for years. They built it up, built the brand. You know, it's, it's a combination of everything and that's what social is. So let's get into it. I just, I wanna make sure that you guys know which is exactly this, which is just the point I'm drilling on, which is abandon the idea of ROI and just use social media as a way to build strong brand awareness. That's what you gotta do. Honestly, that was, that was a quote from Grant Cardone that I just pulled up right there. And this is from Grant Cardone himself, the man who's bringing in over $150 million a year, largely from the attention from social media, says abandon the idea of ROI and just use social media as a way to build strong brand awareness. That's Grant Cardone. So before you think that you're too big or it doesn't work for you, that's a guy who's something like what now? I think 59 years old, okay? Company doing 150 million a year plus working with Fortune 100s and a lot of Fortune 500s. And he's saying to stop, one more time, one more time, abandon the idea of ROI and just use social media as a way to build strong brand awareness. Why is he saying that? Because he knows it works. Because he's invested the time over the years, he's invested the energy, okay? And he says, actually he says right here again, social media is not a waste of time. I once thought this, but quickly saw the potential and power it had. The only businesses having problems or not gaining enough from social media are the ones not using it, not using it correctly, not using it enough, or not using all the platforms. Those are the only people having issues with it, okay? That's what he says in his own words. And I think that that couldn't be farther from the truth. See, the only people that are not getting the results they want are not using it, not using it correctly, not using it enough, not using it all at once, you know? The other big factor, don't worry, we're gonna get some tactics right now, but the other big factor Okay, the other big factor in, 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 in doing it is you might need to expand your team. You might need to expand your resources. Because to do what I'm about to show you is a lot of work. Social media is a lot of work, okay? It's a lot of time invested. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of money. But I promise you, it pays back. You'll get it all back and then some, over and over. It pays dividends. It's like the ultimate dividend paying stock is your own social media, your own brand, your own attention. Uh, and so you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready to invest the money, the time, whatever it takes. If you try to do this all yourself and with the show, you're gonna fail. I mean, you can't. You can pick one or two things, but you're missing out. And you're missing, you know, the first rule we just said right here, one of the big mistakes, not using all the platforms. But it's hard to use all the platforms. It's hard to do them all effectively, okay? So we're gonna break it down right now. Just keep that in mind. You might need to hire more people. You know, if you're looking to go big, don't think of how you can save money. Think of how you can spend money. If you're ready to take action on social media, if you're ready to make money and grow this attention and grow that brand, those are thinking of where you can save money. If you gotta hire some extra people, hire some extra people. If you gotta outsource to an agency like mine, outsource to an agency like mine. 
not a problem. Put the money down, it comes back, I promise you. You know, whatever you gotta do. You gotta take an extra partner to get money, take out a partner. You gotta get some free interns from a local college or university, take some interns. Get somebody helping you build this thing. You don't have to do it alone, okay? Let's break into it, okay? So, I'm gonna start with this. This is your brand or business right here, okay? We're gonna call it, uh, we're gonna put a big B here because it just so happens to work. Brand or business. Whoa, you cannot see that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, B, 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 amazing. B for business or brand, okay? This is your business or brand. You have to find a way to bring attention from every angle to this, your business or your brand, okay? You're gonna get attention from all these different streams. You're gonna get attention from Facebook, okay? That's Facebook right there. You're gonna get attention from Twitter, okay? You're gonna get attention from Instagram. See, the problem is, too many people are getting very caught up in what platform for my business? Which is the best one? Which is the best two? There's no best one, they're all good, they all get attention. It doesn't matter, people go, oh, Snapchat, it's too young, it's for kids. It doesn't matter, it's attention, it's attention, okay? There's people who have closed multi-million dollar deals through Snapchat because the kids of people with money were watching or following a certain person or business, told their parents about product and buy it, and that happens all the time. Attention is attention. If you get, a, you know, you get a massive spot, I'll picture this, a massive spot in the nation's, you know, largest whatever news platform or the biggest Hollywood blockbuster of the year, you get a five second promo right there. Do you care who, like, you're just thinking massive attention. You don't care if the person who watches that movie after is gonna be young or old. It doesn't matter, you're getting the attention either way. You might get some people that are perfect in your target market that wanna buy from you right from that ad. You might get kids who get the attention and tell their parents about you. You know, they see this crazy guy doing this and this and this, daddy, you know, mommy, daddy, this guy has exactly what you've been talking about for the last week, right? And then they come and they buy from you. It doesn't matter where the attention comes from, so don't worry about the platform. So you got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you get all that stuff. You got Snapchat still, okay? And by the way, each of these have multiple ways to leverage them. When you're talking Facebook, you're talking Facebook Live, you're talking Facebook Stories, you know, you're talking Facebook groups, all kinds of different avenues on each platform. And that's the same for all of them. Like, I mean, Twitter has their groups, Instagram has, has live and all that, has stories. Snapchat doesn't have so much, but it has a lot of other stuff. Uh, they all have multiple streams is the point. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, can't forget YouTube. YouTube, okay, these are all avenues of bringing attention into your brand, okay? All this is bringing attention, is bringing eyeballs, and eventually is bringing revenue. All of them are streams. You got outside of social media, because it's not just social media, sometimes you're other streams. So you got your blog. Your blog's gonna bring outside, it's gonna boost SEO, it's gonna get you found in search. And you can also use that blog to promote through social to bring people back. So it all plays together, right? You got email, okay? You got email marketing. You got chat bots, which kind of falls into Facebook, but really Messenger, you know, Facebook Messenger, actually put that here. So Facebook Messenger is a whole other channel in and of itself, really. You can advertise on it, promote on it, uh, you can build up chat bots from it, like I just put there. Okay, so you got Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, blogs, email. Uh, you got new ones coming out, you got new things like Vero coming out, I did a video on that not too long ago. You know, new channels like that. All sorts of stuff, bringing attention to your business. You have traditional, you have traditional TV down here, right? You got TV. If you can get on it, why not? I had a client tell me that they were getting local TV spots for free, for free, just because the network had to fill space. I don't care what platform you get. If you get attention for free, take it. Like, it doesn't matter. Even if four people watch it and two buy, it's worth it. So, TV, if you can leverage it. Radio, if you can leverage it. I know we're talking about social media, but what I'm just getting at here for a second is that this is the attention that comes to your brand. This is all streams of attention. Don't judge them, don't separate them, don't try to figure out which one is best. Figure out how to use all of them, every single one of them, your blog, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Messenger, Vero, uh, chatbots, email, TV, radio. Figure out how to do it all. You don't have time to hire somebody. Do you wanna make money or do you wanna save money? You can't do both. You can't make money and save money. If you want to make money, you got to spend money. If you want to save money, you got to do the opposite. You got to retain money. So when you're ready to spend money and take this seriously and you want to make money, these are all the things you got to hit. 
You know, you might have to hire people to handle, you know, just your blog and email, and then hire another person to ha hire, uh, handle your TV and radio, and then hire another person to build your chatbot, and then hire another company or a bunch of people to do all your social media. You might have to put out the money, but do it. It's worth it. I, like, even for me, this is all these. Oh, you know what we forgot? I was going to tell you. LinkedIn. LinkedIn's another huge one. One of my favorites. Use them all. Use them all. That's one of my favorites. LinkedIn. I took LinkedIn from 300 connections to over 8,000 in like six months. My business blew up because of it. Now I'm scaling my Facebook from like 400 friends to like 1,400 in the last two weeks, three weeks. Gonna max it out at 5,000. I got a personal brand page, you know, a likes page where you can actually like the public page of me. That's already got like 4,000 likes. And now that's blowing up my business. Instagram I put focus on, just like as of a week ago, I was just using it for personal because I was dumb. You know, I wasn't practicing what I preached. I was using Instagram for personal. I opened it up public, went from like 400 friends to, you know, closing in on 900 in like a week. Scaling that and business is coming from that. Doing daily, you know, long format stories and lives, getting calls and getting business from that. It's all attention. If I can get on TV and I can get on a radio and I can get on that, I can do it all. This is your attention channels. This is everything. I'm not going to say you got to pick one. I'm not going to say just do one or two of these. If you are serious about growing your business, you're going to get the money. I don't care if you're going to get a loan. I don't care if you're going to take on a partner. I don't care if you're going to hire free interns. I don't care what you got to do. Get the money or get the resources and do all of them. And do all of them well. No excuses here. I hear too many times like, oh, but if I do all that many at a time, I can't do them well. Find a way to do them well. You can't do them well because you don't have the resources. Get more money, get more people. Okay? It's very easy. If you can't hire your in-house, if you don't want to do the HR, you come to an agency like mine. We don't do all this stuff, but we do social. We'll take all your social on, no problem. And we do it for clients all over the place. They hire us, let me worry about the resources. Let me worry about the team and the people. I'll hire and I'll scale to fit whatever you need. But you gotta be willing to come up with the money. You come up with the money, we'll make all this work. We'll make all this work. The stuff we can handle, we'll do it. This stuff you gotta do on your own, we'll train you to do it. You know, you wanna do lives every single day in your store, we'll train you to do it. Your people train on to do it. We'll say you have the apps, systems, we'll do everything. You come up with the money, this is no problem, but you just have to commit. You have to commit to getting attention to your brand. So these are all the channels that you're gonna be bringing attention in on, okay? So how are you gonna grow them? Let's erase this for a second. That's all your beautiful attention. Let's go into actually what I want you to think about. So when you're going about creating content, whoever ends up creating it, whether you're working with someone or an intern is doing it, or you're doing it yourself, if you really insist on doing it yourself and you want to give up every other part of your job and just focus on this, that's fine. How are you going to do it? We've got four points here that I always use. Okay, this is right out of our social strategy. So I want you to think about something. When you're thinking about what you're going to post and what kind of content is going out, you want to think of a rule. And there's another one that here Grant Cardone talk about, which is, is gold, which is why I love it and why I use it. But it's called agents. So the first one we got here is awareness. I write like a doctor, by the way. Terribly. So the acronym is called AGES. The first is A is awareness. So your first goal when you're putting out content is how do I even get it noticed? Okay, it's putting time and energy into building enough of content, enough of an audience, enough people around you that when you post stuff, it's actually getting noticed, it reaches people. Okay, so you gotta focus big on awareness. Generate awareness. The second thing you're gonna do, the G is give. Okay, give, give back. Give back, like, and it doesn't mean that you have to go give free things and free contests. I mean, share value, okay? Share value, give people something that's worth looking at, that's worth, you know, that's worth sharing, that's worth uh, engaging with, that adds something to their day. Even if that value is just cheers them up or motivates them, give them something. Once you have those eyeballs on you up here, once you have eyeballs on you, you gotta start giving them some. Okay, that's a big deal. Too many people just, Skip this, skip this, skip the other two, and just sell things. You can't do that. Or some people just get this and then sell things. You can't do that. You gotta get the awareness, get the attention, get people's eyeballs by posting lots of content. You know, test everything. Once you figure it out, you get some people following you, give. Okay, give value. The third thing you're gonna do is educate, okay? Educate. All of your content, all of your content should educate. Okay, once you get to this point, once you have the awareness, once you give massive value, you have to focus big on educating. A big part of your content, every time someone sees your stuff, they should be educated. Now, in not every business does that make sense. So that's the one area where I think Grant Cardone misses it a little bit. In a lot of businesses that doesn't make sense, especially in B2B or complex industries, you can work with educate. But there's actually a second version of that. If you think, well, you know, I sell 
bacon caramel bits or some weird thing like that. How do I educate on bacon? And to a degree, you can, okay? Or maybe you say, I'm a, I'm a fashion model. I just want to get myself out there, my looks out there, you know? Or I'm a whatever, you know, a personal brand of some sort. I don't teach anything, it's just I want to get something out there and I can't, like, what do I have to educate? If you don't have anything that you can educate your audience on, there's nothing you can teach. And educate means, like, I'll give you an example. When I'm saying educate, I mean this. See this video I'm putting out right now? It's a perfect example. I'm giving you guys, I'm teaching you about social media. I'm giving you something and you're going to learn, you're going to take notes and it's valuable to you. But you can't do this all the time. So when you can't educate, if, that, if you can't educate in the majority of your content, you've got to try to at least entertain, okay? And that's when that was missed. You're gonna educate or entertain. Got it? Okay, and entertain means that if you can't educate me, everything I see from you should at least entertain me. I should get a laugh, a smile, you know, I should feel like, wow, I look forward to that every day. I like your content. It's something that's useful to me. It's like a TV show. When I turn on the TV channel of your brand, you better be giving me something useful It's teaching me something or entertaining me, one or the other. You can't, you can't miss those things, okay? So you're gonna do awareness, give, educate, and entertain. The last one. Shares. Okay, when you're out there building awareness, and you're giving value, and you're educating, you're entertaining, how do you do all that? How do you do all of this in a way that promotes shares, okay? We want shares to go way, way up. Because it's not enough to just give this to your audience. We need your audience doing work for you and sharing this. Because you're going to put the work in to create this educational, entertaining content. You're going to give lots of value. But if the only people that see it are the people already following you, that's not good enough because your audience doesn't grow. So the secret to growth, this is the secret to uh, an engaged audience. This is the secret to getting people to follow you, get awareness and build an engaged audience that values you, okay, that comes to your content and trusts your content, but this is the secret to that massive growth. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta find a way, to, how do I put content out, and it doesn't always, here's a newsflash, this doesn't always have to all be content you make. You can share trending quotes that your audience finds relevant. If you're in the business space, share a very motivational business quote. Chances are, if you've seen a quote somewhere, if you've seen some sort of post that you felt the need to share, you could just take that and repost it for yourself. Give it to people. Credit doesn't take away anything from you. Give credit to who it came from, where it came from, send people back to it, but post that. And you'll be surprised how many people share. And when they share that, it's still gonna promote your page, your content, right? Fair? Fair. I'm gonna show you another method. I'm gonna see if I can if I can recount this. So remember ages. Anytime you're posting content, okay? Now I'm gonna show you guys something else. If you might be trying to plan all this content now, and you're like, well, where does this where does this all fit? I'm gonna draw something here. It's a pyramid. I'll show you what this is. Okay. Hero. Okay. Check this out. This is called the content pyramid. You can't read it because I suck at writing. But it's called the content pyramid. And what this is going to help you with when you're trying to grow your social media is it's going to help you establish uh, a set structure of what sort of content you need to make. So I already told you, follow the ages method, okay? Put out content that brings awareness. Put out content that's going to educate. Put out content that's going to bring value. Put out content that's shareable. That's fine, but how do you come up with all that? Where does it all fit? This is an easy way to figure it out. So this content pyramid works like this. And this is super valuable, so take notes on this, okay? Because this is something we do with all our clients, and they pay for this. You're getting it for free. Hero content. Hero content is something at the top of the pyramid, okay? It's at the top of the pyramid for a reason. Hero content is high level, valuable, entertaining, captivating content. You know, that you're gonna produce where probably, probably at least 50% of your energy is gonna go to creating and it's gonna have the least frequency. You might put out one piece of hero content a month even. Let me give you an example of what that would be. Your hero content is like your giant Hollywood blockbuster. It's the thing you're gonna put buzz around. It's the thing that when people see that piece of content, they're gonna go, wow, what is this? Who is this posting this? That's insane. 
An example of it is uh, actually a local guy, Canadian from Toronto. His name is Gregory O'Gallagher. He runs a fitness business. He sells all sorts of training programs and now products and all sorts of things. Uh, he does very well. He does well into the seven figures every year and he's young. And a big part of his success came from mastering hero content because where everyone else in the fitness industry was just posting uh, the other two, but I'll, I'll get there in a second, or if you go back to the ages model, the other people were just posting informational, educational in the fitness world all the time. He came in and said, let's break up this educational, this value content with hero content. And he did these really cool cinematic, like mini short films. You know, maybe they're like five or six minutes long. And they were totally like nothing you've ever seen. So he did one about like, uh, called the real Bruce Wayne, like Batman, and he had his life, how he lives in this, this really cool mansion, these nice cars, and it wasn't cheesy at all, like that's his life. He's, it's his parents' house, and people know that, but he just kind of documented it in such a way that it was like watching this Batman movie, and it was well produced, and there was drones, and then he talked about the, the fitness, nutrition, and fasting, and how things changed his life, but he did it in a very cinematic way, which was super cool, and the way he put that together, and then he put ad dollars behind it, now I'm seeing this and I'm like, this, is, this guy's like unlike any other fitness guy in the world. Like, who is this guy? The real Bruce Wayne, what the hell? And then he did that, you know, once a month with other things. He, he did it with Wolf of Wall Street. He did like a parody of Wolf of Wall Street, highly produced, got models and got everything in. And he would do, do these like once a month, push ad dollars behind it. And this brings a lot of new attention, okay? That hero content brings a lot of new eyeballs because people see hero content, highly produced things. Think about how can you make your own Hollywood blockbuster? And those Hollywood blockbusters that you can create on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is, all of them are gonna hit. Those YouTube, those blockbusters are what's gonna bring this massive attention that you're gonna put ad dollars behind that are gonna introduce you in the best possible light in the highest possible form to your potential customers. That's hero content. So this is the top of the content pyramid. You see there's three tiers. The top is hero content. So that's content you're gonna wanna put out, like I said, once a month, highly produced, highly valuable, highly engaging, and if it's the first thing I saw from your business or brand, I would go, wow, I wanna see who this is. Once you use that to get all your attention to your brand, okay, you're gonna to move to hub content. And hub content is another type of content. And the way you can look at this, by the way, you have three tiers. When you plan your month's content calendar out, when you plan what's going out in a month, plan one hero video, you know, maybe four to eight, 10, whatever, hub content type pieces, and then another four, eight, 10 pieces of hygiene content, right? That's how you use this. That's what I'm going over. So the second part was hub content. Hub content is like what I describe as a Netflix series, okay? What I mean by Netflix series is this is the thing that like once people are following you, okay, this is what they look forward to. How do you spell Netflix? Netflix. This is what people look forward to. This is like your series, your every week I look forward to this, you know. Maybe you have a, a, a car dealership and what you're gonna be doing in that car dealership is you know, every week you're gonna do two episodes of uh, Cars and Coffee where you take a customer out in the nicest new car, you buy them coffee, you know, on the dealership, <laughs> not on them. Buy them coffee, go out for a 10 minute ride in the, in the town, you know, stop by a few of their favorite spots, bump into a friend on the road, whatever, get their take on the car. You know, it's a little bit funny, it's a little bit engaging, and every, every week you're gonna do two of those. That can be hub content. Whereas the same example, if you were a, if you were a car dealership and you're trying to do hero content, I'll give an example, because I missed an example of that, uh, that could be the very, very highly produced, take the, you know, the very, very top model and produce some crazy cinematic where you're testing it and putting it through its paces and you know, intense music and you have a really cool guy and girl behind the car driving the deal and you got all that stuff happening and it's like, wow, what is a dealership? That could be hero, but then the hub's gonna be like what I just explained, you know, that casual hop in the car uh, every week, you're gonna do Monday and Wednesday, you're gonna schedule it, people are gonna expect it, and they're gonna look forward to it. You're gonna do something fun, you're entertaining, all that, you're gonna fill that. Okay, the last part of content, so you have hero content, which is like your cinematic, your Hollywood blockbuster, you got hub content, which is like, you know, weekly value ad stuff to look forward to, uh, you know, maybe twice a week, it's like your Netflix series, and then you have hygiene. Hygiene content is basically, the, in the simplest possible form, hygiene content is answer your customers' questions. Easiest type of content to produce, okay? Your customers, your potential buyers have questions about your industry in general, about things and purchase decisions you're trying to make, right? Like if I'm selling TVs, potential buyers of TVs are gonna have questions on selecting the right TV. So maybe you come up with a series, whether it's in photo form, or by the way, all these can be technically photo form or video form, and you come out with a, a, a video type uh, 
kind of Q&A deal where you're going to go through the top questions that week, every week uh, about buying a TV. Or we're going to do some like, hey, here's TV comparisons. Those are really popular at one point, right? Here's TV A, TV B. We're going to run it through paces and compare them, you know? Run it through top 10 things you got to know when you're buying a TV. Stuff like that. Again, you want to use dealerships as an example. That's like in the service department, you know, like 10 things you got to know while servicing your vehicle or 10 ways you know that it's time for an oil change or 10 things you got to do before winter or when to know when to change your tires, like silly things like that. But things that your customers could be searching for, right? Like, you know, what's that ticking sound in my engine? Maybe you do a whole video on ticking sounds and what each one means and examples and that's hygiene. This is going to give, you know, your customers, not just existing ones, but even this might even actually attract new ones because of SEO benefit. You know, you do a blog that answers a bunch of questions, then do a video on that blog, and then people find that blog, find that video, find your social, and you bring them into a circle. So, to recap, Hero is your big cinematic, right? Hub is your Netflix series, and Hygiene is your Q&A. It's like your Wikipedia page. You know, it's like your how-to. Fit all that stuff. Remember I told you the Aegis concept? Remember I told you the Aegis content, uh, concept? When you're thinking ages, so when you're thinking awareness, give, educate, and shares. Awareness, give, educate, and shares. When you're thinking of creating content that fits all those categories, that brings attention in, that gives value, that educates, and that promotes sharing, then you gotta figure out how to fit them into here, right? So your awareness content might fit well at here bring attention in. Whereas, you know, your give, the value, the fun and all that can fit into the hub. But the education does very well as hygiene content. And then all of it should have a spin that makes it highly shareable. And that's how those two concepts play together. So if you can do what I said from the beginning, which is get on all channels, be omnipresent, okay? And then implement all of this stuff when you're building out content and you can do all of this, you're gonna blow up your social media. You're gonna grow fast. You're gonna build a big audience. People are gonna love you. You're gonna love your content. You're gonna have so much value. It's incredible. But take it from me, it's really hard to do alone. It's doable. It's doable. You gotta give some up though. But don't be afraid to spend. Hire those interns. Hire those new employees. Hire those teams. Hire an agency. Do whatever you gotta do to make this happen. I promise you. You wanna know how to grow your social media fast? I hope you weren't looking for a, you know, kind of get big fast secret or get rich quick scheme. Uh, there is none. I have no one tactic or method. It's hard work. It's be on all the channels I outlined before. It's think of the ages concept you're making content, fit it into the pyramid, uh, the pyramid system here, the here, the hub, the hygiene. Okay. Fit it into this, build it up a content calendar, 30 days in advance, fill with all this stuff and get that content out daily. Get content out every day that fits this. Something, one of these goes out every day on all the channels. Get out twice a day if you can, three times a day, four times a day, doesn't matter. As long as your content, all people always say that, like how many times a day can I post? If your content serves to bring awareness, gives value, educates, entertains, and promotes sharing, and fits within this kind of you know pyramid system here, it's gonna be gold content. It won't matter. It won't matter. Some things you just can't get too much of a good thing. I mean, unless you're posting 35,000 times, time, like, it's not gonna happen. If you're posting once a day, twice a day, three times a day, four times a day, five times, even six times a day, as long as it fits that, and most importantly, the either giving value or educating, as long as it fits those two things, above all else, it doesn't matter how much you post. It doesn't matter where you post. And I highly, highly suggest, I mean, repurposing content, because you can't create all new content 100% of the time for every single platform. So you might create a piece of hero content to drive awareness, right? Once, spend the money on it, and then distribute it across all the channels. That said, some channels do better for some things than others. Like in some cases, you know, a very graphic, cool photo that's very well done, edited, engaging, might do a lot better on Instagram than it might do on Twitter. On Twitter, you might have a different approach. Instagram is more gonna be for engagement, sharing those cool photos and videos, and getting people to like and comment and start conversations. Uh, whereas Twitter, for example, can do stuff Instagram can't do. You might wanna actually run things like polls on Twitter, get feedback from your users, from your audience, uh, build out stuff like that there, share company news, and like you couldn't share company news or big of things that you're doing or stuff like that on Instagram all the time. Right? If you wanna share cool things that are happening in the community, the business, Twitter's for that. So they all have their own strength, but you can repurpose a lot of the content. You know, The way that I'm gonna start doing it, you're gonna see eventually is, I'm gonna set up a studio type deal. I'm gonna film different series that fit all these criteria, right? And I'm gonna share those series everywhere. 
with only slight variations. So obviously then on top of those generic series that we're gonna put everywhere, we'll have, you know, I'll do Instagram stories independently. We'll do Facebook lives independently. We'll do Twitter polls and this and that. And so it's all gonna have its own little variation, but the, the, the core of it all will be this, I can create the content once and get it everywhere. And then go into each platform and add your own little touch unique to that platform, right? Because everyone has its own little kind of nuances. But that's the deal. That's how you grow your social media fast. You figure this stuff out. This is what we, this is exactly, actually, this is exactly what we do with our clients. When we build a social media strategy for a client, it's really built on this, you know? And we go so detailed. We, like, usually the first step when a client signs with us, before we take over all our social media, start doing their media production, scheduling, management of everything, uh, before all that happens, we develop a strategy. And that strategy is based all in this, but it's so detailed that even if they don't work with us, they can take that strategy and do it themselves. Like we, we already, the hard part is done the strategy. The rest is just resource. As long as you have resources, you can implement a strategy, right? So either way, if you do this, you blow up. If you do this, you'll grow your social media. This is the fastest way to grow social media is to figure this out. This is the formula. Stop posting haphazardly. Stop you know, posting every day for a week and then not posting for two months. Stop using one or two channels because you prefer them. There's no preference. They're all attention. Okay, the goal is to bring attention to your ideas, to your business, to your brand, to make more money. That's today's lesson. I wanna know what you guys think. I wanna know your questions. Leave the comments below. DM me, get in touch, share a video back to me, tag me in something. I wanna join the conversation. What do you guys think of this stuff? And by the way, should I do more videos like this? If you found this valuable, let me know. Make sure you like this, make sure you share this. Show me it was valuable, I'll do more for you guys. See you next time.